Shabbat Shalom, everyone. This is Rabbi Cassie, and I'm so happy to share with you a little piece of Torah teaching. The Torah is complicated, one of my students recently exclaimed. There is so much more there than meets the eye. This week's Torah portion includes a verse that exemplifies her point. It begins with a phrase that most of us have heard before and yet may not have had the chance to fully understand. Among a series of commandments about how to live an ethical life, Parashat Mishpatim includes one that always made me incredibly uncomfortable. Life for a life, eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth, hand for a hand, foot for a foot. When someone is hurt, is the Torah telling us violence is the answer? If someone murders another person, is this Torah text teaching us that we have a right to murder them? The Talmud tells us that we don't. It insists that everyone is treated with justice and with fairness. It's decisively against the death penalty. In fact, the Talmud goes so far as to say that a court that executes someone more than once every 70 years is murderous and destructive. The answer to murder, our tradition tells us, is not murder. The answer to hurt is not to hurt. From this, we learn that life for a life, eye for an eye, was never meant to be taken literally. As Tevye taught us, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth will make the whole world blind and toothless. So what then is the deeper meaning of this text? Well, some rabbis teach that the verse serves as a detriment to bad behavior and a reminder that hurting another human being comes at grave consequences. We know this. The verse underlines the importance of justice within a society, something that is so incredibly true to so many teachings without our Torah. But there's a mystical perspective that offers another layer to this understanding. It is one of ultimate unity, teaches Chaya Kaplan Lerner. Chaya, Chaya Kaplan Lachner, excuse me, in which the injured and the injurer are in fact one and the same. She explains, when I take your eye, I am taking my own, for we are inherently intertwined. From this enlightened vantage point, the notion of an eye for an eye is less of a prescription than it is a description. It does not so much prescribe what should be done in a case of damage as it describes exactly what actually metaphysically occurs in the course of an injury. All throughout our Torah portion, we can find echoes of this teaching, reminding us that everyone in the Jewish community is intertwined, that our actions affect those around us and affect us as well. Mishpatim, this Torah portion that follows the Ten Commandments by just one week, calls us to be our best selves in circumstances even in which we would rather not. If we see an animal that's belonging to an enemy, it calls us to raise it and to take care of it and to return it. It commands us to forgive deaths, to take care of people in need, to refrain of spreading false rumor, to be fair even when doing so makes our lives more difficult, and to see the humanity in every person that we meet. It reminds us that we should not wrong or oppress a stranger, for we know what it is like to be a stranger. We were strangers in the land of Egypt. The verse life for a life, eye for an eye may read like a recipe for violence and retaliation, but perhaps its meaning is truly the opposite. It is a call for compassion and recognition that in essence, we are all the same, that we have the power to hurt, but so too do we have the power to heal, to hope, to provide comfort and, and love. That every time we do these things, we make the lives of those around us a little bit better, and we make ours as well. I hope everyone has a Shabbat Shalom. I look forward to seeing you tonight at services, our musical service at 7 p.m., and we're so happy to welcome back Cantor Alan after his month-long sabbatical, and to see you at all the wonderful events and opportunities that we have in the week ahead. Shabbat shalom.